Now the Welsh Celts, like the Irish, relate their ancestral origins in a wondrous mythology, contained for those who care to inquire in the Welsh triads and in the four branches of the Mabinogion. Well, here a similar tale is told of the arrival of godlike beings from the West who, like the Tua de Danon of Ireland, withdrew into the fairy realm, or Celtic otherworld, which the Welsh have called Anu, soon after the arrival of the very first mortal beings to their lands. Now the exact location of Anu is not known, though it is said that it may be found under the sea, beneath the waters of a lake, through a magic mist, or upon distant islands, east of the sun and west of the moon. It may be known also as Avalon, as the Kir She, or as the honeyed plain of bliss. Those who dwell there know not of time, for they are forever ageless in their prime. Nor know they of sickness or of sorrow, for they are the mighty ones, first gods and goddesses of the Celtic peoples, who came in time to inhabit these isles. Now it is said that they possessed also four magical gifts, including a sacred cauldron that was warmed by the breath of nine muses and rimmed with a ring of pearls. It was said to have contained the awen, or gift of inspiration. But beware, all ye yearning souls, who would sail the perilous routes to Anun, in quest of such a cauldron. For the ocean currents there run deep indeed, and the weak are so swiftly swept off course, and so powerfully beglamoured by the illusions of the deep, that they very soon forget themselves and their loved ones left behind and even the very reason for their questing. Only the strong of heart survive the approach, and only those of purest intent are given to drink of the sweet wine of that vessel. Now in the tale of Bran the Blessed, one time chieftain of Anun, we are told the story of seven heroes, including the immortal bard Taliesin, who enter into the realm of Anun, and who reside there for a period of four score years, during which they are continually renewed from a magical spring of great power. Oh, and there they were without stint and were joyful and notwithstanding all the sorrows they had seen before their eyes, and notwithstanding that they themselves had suffered, there came to them no remembrance of either that or of any other sorrow in the world. And the sweet birds of the goddess Rhiannon sang to them throughout, and each song they heard, it was more lovely than before. And very soon, they no longer noticed the passing of time, nor could any tell of his fellow that he had grown older during that period. Oh, perfect is my seat in Kirshi, sings Taliesin of this paradise. No plague nor age harms him who dwells therein, Manwidian and Prideri knew it. Three tuneful instruments around the fire played before it. 
and around its corners are ocean currents, and the wonder-working spring is above it. Sweeter than white wine is the drink of it. But at the end of this wondrous span, one of the seven is tempted to open a forbidden door, which leads back into the world. Oh, and when he looked, they were as conscious of every loss they had ever sustained, and of every kinsman and friend they had missed, and of every ill that had come upon them. And from that same moment they could not rest and straight away made haste from anew, which faded swiftly from view, like a dream of the soul. Though till the doom it shall remain in the bardic prayer, that thrice the number that would have filled Pedwin, we entered into the deep, and excepting seven, none have returned. And when at last Taliesin, immortal bard of Cymru, completed his long song concerning the quest for the cauldron of inspiration known to us now as the Holy Grail, all the ills of those who heard it were completely dissolved.